Good afternoon viewers, welcome to Shamus Equal Access Talk Show on Zonex TV. Today I'm joined in the studio by Zoleka Hatitombwe. We're going to be discussing domestic violence. So Zoleka is a victim of, the, of domestic violence. So she's going to be talking to us from the heart, how she experienced it and how she found help. Because nowadays uh, a lot of cases are happening where partners are killing each other because of domestic violence and abuse. Zoleka, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Julius. Zoleka, just in a brief, what is domestic violence? Domestic violence is um, intentional uh, abuse towards the other partner. Sometimes, uh, in most cases, actually it becomes pe persistent. Okay. So basically, I would say it is uh, intentional and persistent uh, abuse towards the other partner, which results in um, physical hurt, emotional hurt, and um, a whole lot of other things with it. How, how do you know that you are in an abusive relationship? Um, you would know because of the emotions, that um, your emotions become disturbed, um, the physical part you being beaten, which is not normal. So in, in such cases, you, it's clear indication that you are in an abusive and it, it happens against your will. So okay. Let's yeah. talk of you from your experience. Um, when did you actually realize that you're actually falling deeper into abusive relationship? So in my case, it started as emotional and verbal abuse. So uh, with someone just maybe not talking to you for days or maybe the, um, when they do actually speak to you, then it's rude or it's something that just hurts you deep inside. And um, it extends to beating, it extends to uh, someone just maybe not pitching at home. And if it makes you hurt, it makes you sad. That's... Uh, in my case, that's when I realized this is actually abuse. This is actually, no, it's not supposed to go this way. It was over a period of how long? Um, I only realized after a period of two years. Um, mm. So for two years, I stayed in this so-called marriage or relationship. Mm. It's in, in the first, I mean, at first I thought it was just his way of speaking to me, his way of acting. Mm. But then when it became to the, uh, when it came to beating and, um, then I realized this is there's so much deeper. Mm -hmm. For the this. for the period of two years that you were in that kind of abusive relationship, how were you taking it? Did you approach anybody for help, or you just said no? I don't want to destroy my marriage. I was scared. First of all, I had my kid to think of. I was pregnant mm -hmm. at the time, so I was scared at first to think. But then the more the beatings came, the more I realized, you know, there is no reason for me to stay. First of all, he might end up murdering me and then there's nobody to look after that child in any case, the one that I was trying to protect. Because in my case, I was thinking if I leave, what am I going to do financially? What am I going to do with the child by myself? Where am I going to stay? Because he was, you know, say the head of the house, paying the bills and everything. So I just felt like, you know, if I leave, then what will happen next? That was my big question. Very true, which is what happens to a lot of people. They think of where yes. will I go. Yes. Did you approach your parents? I did appro uh, approach my grandmother, who was uh, my next of kin after my parents passed. And um, the questions that would come from her were like, what did you do to him to make him sad? What did you do to him to make you, him hit you? What did you do? So the more she asked me, what did I do? Instead of trying to help me, the more I shunned away from her completely. Did she blame you at one instant? Did she blame you for, for, for not looking after the husband? Yes. Um, and uh, culturally, um, I think I was expected to keep quiet mm. because then that's a sign of respect towards my husband. But I just, a big part of me just felt like, you know, it can't be, uh, you know, beating is, can't be respecting. It's, it's, I don't think submission means him beating me and I'm just going to keep quiet about it. That is okay. not my definition of submission. Sure. As she would say, you need to submit whatever he says, whatever he does, you need to submit. And then um, the more I complained, it made it look as if I was not submitting to my husband. But um, the hurts, um, you know, if somebody... Uh, punches you in the face <laughs> and you can't even go outside to look at your friends or other people and people hear you cry always and you know you can't even make friends because you are mm. shy of what people would think of you because in, in that at that stage I was beginning to think maybe there is actually 
a problem with me <laughs> and not him. Okay. Besides your grandmother, who else did you speak to? Um, um, she was really the closest person that I had at the time. And I felt like maybe if I told her, <laughs> if she would understand me, then the whole world would. But because she gave me such questions and made me feel like there was something actually wrong with me, then I just decided maybe everybody else is going to feel the same way that way. Okay. And when did you realize enough is enough? When he hit me and I was almost eight months pregnant with my child and he brought a girlfriend in the house, ordered me to sleep on the floor so he and the girlfriend can sleep on the bed and I decided, you know what, <laughs> move enough on. Is enough. Yeah. Okay. Did you approach any professional person at all or you just handled it on your own? Um, at the time, I was lucky enough to have my church with me. Um, at the time, I had moved to Cape Town, where I became part of Youth on Church. And I had my pastoral care pastors at the time, and they helped me transition from this, um, from this domestic relationship I was to becoming by myself. And um, they, they, there was a whole lot of therapy that went with it, a um, whole lot of counseling sessions, a whole lot of things that happened at the mm -hmm. time, but mm -hmm. they really helped me. Okay. We are going live to Johannesburg via Skype. We are joined by Nina Valletta. She's an attorney uh, on family planning and litigation and a whole lot of stuff. Good afternoon, Nina, and welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Mr. Shamu and the viewers. Can you hear me and see me well? Yes, we can hear you. We can see you loud and clear. Yes. Okay. Nina, tell us. I think you've heard the conversation here. I'm sitting with Zoleka, who's one of the victims of domestic violence. What does the law say about domestic violence? Okay, uh, firstly, from a legal perspective, uh, within South Africa, the government realized that it is, it's a scourge in our society, so they made special laws to cater specifically for victims of domestic violence. So the, 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 the Domestic Violence Act of 1998, it gives a whole broader definition of what is domestic violence and what constitutes uh, domestic relationships and what remedies are available specifically for domestic violence situations. Okay, there's been a lot of cases happening at the moment where it, the tables have been turned around now. Uh, men are now becoming victims of domestic violence. What advice can you give to, to, to men? Okay, first of all, I would like to put a disclaimer out there to say this is not marriage counseling. <laughs> I'm just speaking <laughs> from a legal perspective. Yes. So the law is out there for your protection. For example, we wouldn't want situations where lives are lost unnecessarily. So you'll find that the Domestic Violence Act goes to define domestic violence apart from the and emotional abuse, we know it also gives uh, a definition of economic abuse. Mm. For example, where your partner, you are living together, whether you are boyfriend and girlfriend, same-sex relationships, you are married, or you are roommates who are sharing a flat. If a person, for example, is not paying their half of the rent or their half of the board, that is economic abuse. Or they are depriving you of uh, maintenance, which they are supposed to give you they're supposed to buy groceries or pay school fees. That is economic abuse. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, uh, there's what we call a protection order in terms or a restraining order in terms of the Domestic Violence Act, where you can go to a magistrate. Magistrates can be woken up at midnight, 12 at midnight, if it's urgent cases. Mm -hmm. But the, the first point of call is the police. So where the magistrate will issue an order with various conditions, for example, I've seen situations where a person can be prohibited from entering certain parts of the house, for example, if people are going through a divorce mm. and there the are instances of domestic violence, the court can order to say you are not allowed in this bedroom or whatever until this is finalized, mm. you know, situations like that. Mm. So you can go and you don't need a lawyer for that, it's free at the courts and they take these things very seriously. I've noticed that it doesn't matter where you're from, whether you're a refugee or whatever. That does not matter. Mm -hmm. Because uh, especially where children are involved, I've seen they act very quickly. Okay, Nina, um, 
What do you, what can you say to those people that are in denial? You know, like for example, Zuleka, it took her two years before she actually realized she could lose her life. So those are kind of people that are in denial of, the, of what's happening, of the domestic violence and abuse. They want to stay in the relationship because of economic, like in an instance, mm -hmm. and because the friends and families are not supporting her. Culturally, a woman is supposed to be submissive, as she said. Uh, what, can, what advice can you give to such kind of people? Okay, so this is a very sensitive issue, especially where marriage and children are involved and like you say, cultural issues as well. Mm. So what I would suggest is, uh, you know, as human beings, maybe try your support groups. Like she rightly you said, she had a church and, and other, maybe counseling first or something. Speak to someone and let somebody know whether you decide of the situation. Mm. As lawyers, we also advocate for things like counseling. We don't just straight away go to court. So speak to someone, someone objective perhaps, mm. uh, and let someone know, at least. Because it's not easy, I know, to just up and go and leave, or even sue the father of your children, for example, and go to the magistrate, because now maybe you'll be thinking, where will we get money for food and school fees? Mm. So at least somebody know and then you will see but where it's life threatening mm. we normally advise to just go to the police and take the legal route especially when lives are threatened now nina valeta thank you very much uh yeah stand by don't go away so right. like we hear that from a professional uh, point of view yes uh, Still, right now, you haven't, uh, you didn't report the case or anything. Is everything all yonky dory on your side? Um, in my case, I decided not to report him because afterwards he left and he left me alone. Okay. So then, um, I just uh, decided, you know, um, since he's no longer in the picture, I can move on with my life. But um, there are people out there who are still in this issue. Whom I would really advise report the matter. And um, what happens after you have left, there is a whole lot of things. Um, people tend to think you just maybe need um, that there is stuff like, you know, uh, free counseling that the government offers. So you can get that, you know, as well. And those people actually help you with advice on what to do to move on from that stage. Okay. Like um, working for your children and a way to get maintenance if need be. Um, in my case, I'm not getting any of that. I have no idea where the guy is, okay. <laughs> but I'm very happy in that case. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Nina, do you have uh, a list of places where people can go? Yes, definitely. Uh, like uh, your guest in the studio, as she rightfully mentioned, there are organizations out there that will offer counseling and uh, I can, uh, there's one that offers 24 hour counseling. It's called FAMSA, F A M S A. You can uh, call them on the toll free 0861322322. That's the one I can, because they are available 24 hours. Because sometimes talking to someone helps when you're in that situation. Thank you very much, Nina. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Zuleka, for coming to the studio. Welcome. There we go, viewers. We heard about domestic abuse from a lawyer's perspective and from a victim perspective. Please report any emotional, physical, or economical abuse that you see unfolding before it's too late. Thank you for watching Shamosikola Access Talk Show on Zonex TV.